Okay, good morning. So we are starting a new unit this week. It's called Quadratic Equations. And um, this puts us, it's the third out of the fifth unit. So we are just about three-fifths of the way there. So very exciting. And Quadratic Equations is a big unit for your future study in math. So let's look at example number one. Uh, we're given the equation x plus 30 equals x squared. And we have to write an equivalent equation. Now, if I were to just subtract the x on both sides, we would get 30 equals x squared minus x. That is an equivalent equation, okay? Uh, typically, what they're looking for is an equation that's written in standard form. Or for quadratic, anyways, that means set equal to zero. So, and we typically do prefer the x squared to be positive, with, if at all possible, but it doesn't have to be. So, let's subtract the 30 to finish this. Then we get zero equals x squared minus x minus 30. So standard form for a quadratic I'm going to switch screens so you can see more of my paper is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now remember the a, the b, and the c are numbers. Okay, and there are going to be numbers that we plug into later, the quadratic formula. And remember your variables, the x squared, x, and then we have no x. The c is the constant. Not sure why they used the a and the b, um, or abc, but they could have used um, pqr. It doesn't really matter. The a, the b, and the c are numbers. All right, so and that's uh, exercise number one, or practice section number one in Delta Math. And practice section number two is the same thing. Uh, looks a little bit different, so we can do one more. And let's see if I can find a harder problem. Uh, let's see, two x squared plus 2x minus 2 equals 5x. So they want this in standard form. So standard form, everything looks great, the x squared's positive. We just want to move that 5x over to get it set equal to 0. So in standard form, nothing to combine with the 2x squared, so that gets brought down. 2 minus 5 is a negative 3 equals 0. Okay. Next section. Uh, just still more standard form, a little bit harder. So example number three, it says five plus x squared plus x equals three plus five x squared. So here's the x squared, it's on the left side, it's positive. So I'm gonna move these two terms over and I'm gonna subtract all in the same step. And I say subtract because on the right side, they're both positive. Okay, and we do end up with a negative x squared. So in standard form, the x squared will come first. So I'm going to combine those. A 1 minus 5 is negative 4x squared, and then the x, and 5 minus 3 is 2. And remember, uh, positive x squared, let's draw a line here, and y, x, y, x. So positive x squares, their graph looks like this, right? And negative x squares are upside down, okay? So that is in standard form. All right, the last two sections, um, solving by factoring. So we'll do a few of those because I know factoring can be a challenge. So I'll move on to the next page. And we'll put solve by factoring, which is just one method, right, to solving a quadratic equation. 
All right, so this is example number four. And the equation is x squared plus 11x plus 32 equals negative x. So if I'm solving, you do want this um, x squared term to be positive. So it's positive. And I want to just move this x over by doing the opposite of a negative x and adding x. So now we get x squared plus 12x plus 32 equals 0. So remember, they have to, the two numbers that I pick, there's no GCF, so we are going to set up the two parentheses. It is x times x. The two numbers that we pick for here, and here. They have to multiply to get 32 and then add to a positive 12. So if off to the side you write down the factors of 32 um, the two that add to 32 would be 4 and 8. They have to multiply to a positive 32 and then add to a positive 12. So it could be positive 4 times positive 8, or it could be negative 4 times negative 8, because that gives you a positive 32, but that would add or combine to a negative 12. So we want to use that plus 4 plus 8. And then the next step would be to draw your line, and you set each factor equal to 0. Because what this line is saying is that if this times this equals 0, either this equals 0, or this equals 0 or both. So then solving the equation for each we get x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 8. Now I'm okay if you go right from this line to this line because the factor, right, if it's x plus 4 then the root's going to be negative 4. If it's x plus 8, then the root is going to be negative 8. Okay, so I'm okay if you skip all this in the middle. You can skip it and go right from here to here. All right, let's do one more of these, and then we'll look at a word problem. Because you hopefully, uh, with all that practice, well, actually I'll try maybe to pick one of each different type of factoring. Okay, so that was our trinomial. We had the three terms, and this is going to be a GCF. But in that polynomials unit, we practiced our factoring. So if I look at x squared and 9x, they have a GCF of x. So we want to pull out the x and um, so that means if I divide this essentially by x, right, um, x squared divided by x is x, 9x divided by x is 9 bring down the plus sign, draw the line. Sorry to interrupt this video, but Brian, you need to get Peggy. And then x plus 9 equals 0. And then subtract 9. No, she's upstairs. She just has a glove. And so now my roots are 0 and negative 9. Okay? And then let's do one last type of factoring before we look at a word problem. Um, and let's say it's x squared minus 49 equals 0. This had a GCF. They had an x in common, but there's nothing in common here. So we set up our two parentheses. And this is dots. It's going to be x and x. And the two factors that multiply to a negative 49 but add to 0 because there's no middle term is the plus 7 minus 7. Okay, so skipping that step like we said above right here. We get a root for this one of negative 7 and then a root here of positive 7. Now remember your roots, just to review, I know we're not there yet, so negative 7 is over here, positive 7 is over here, and it's right side up. The graph is going to look like this. So the roots, and you can always check on your calculator are where the graph crosses the x-axis. All right, 
a word problem. Oh, fun, fun, fun. But no worries because at this point we're just solving the word problems by factoring. So we'll do two of those. You can just watch one and stop it if you want. This one says the width of a rectangle is the length minus five units. The area is six units. I skipped a couple words. What is the width of the rectangle? Well, I like to always, always, always draw a picture. And then with this, and this is what's nice about geometry, is that you don't have to write your let statements because you can just draw the picture. It says the width is, so my width, we'll call this the width, it really doesn't matter in a rectangle, is the length minus 5. Well, we don't know the length, so let's call the length x. So then the length minus 5 looks like that. And we know for area, the formula for the area of a rectangle is length times width. So the area is 6, so 6 equals um, x times x minus 5. And from there, we have a pretty easy quadratic to solve. So using the distributive property, and I'm going to put the 0 here because I have to subtract it, and I'm going to write the distribution and put minus 6 at the end. So x squared minus 5x minus 6. Okay, so I move the 6 over. Now, pretty easy factoring. So we're looking at the factors of 6, which are 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. There's no GCF, so we set up our two parentheses, x times x. Now, the signs have to be different. Okay, so we can do plus, minus, plus, minus, or it can be negative 1, positive 6, negative 2, positive 3. And they need to combine to a negative 5. Well, these combine to positive 5, positive 1, negative 5 is right there. So it ends up being x plus 1 minus 6. So for this factor, we get x equals negative 1. And for this factor, we get x equals 6. Now, um... What is the width? So if we plug these numbers back in, because these are our final answers, so I shouldn't technically have circled them, but if I draw two rectangles and say, oh, can I have a length of negative 1? No. So if I check with a length of 6, and then 6 minus 5 is 1, 6 times 1 is 6, good. What is the width? The width is the 1. So the width equals 1. All right. And we have no units, so we can leave it like that. All right, last problem. All right. Um, this is example number 8. And last one for today. The difference. So it's going to mean we're going to subtract of the square of a number and 40 is equal to 3 times that number. Find the positive solution. So we're going to get a positive and negative answer and we want the positive. All right, so as we said, difference, so that means we're going to subtract. We're going to subtract the square of a number, so that would be x squared, and 40. That was easy. Is equal to 3. Oh, 3 times that number, or 3x. So there's our quadratic we wanted in standard form, so I'm going to subtract 3x. There's no like term on the left, so I just put it somewhere in the middle because when I write it in standard form, it has to be in the middle. 
If I go to factor this, there is no GCF, so we set up our two parentheses. It's going to be x times x. Factors of 40, 1 times 40, 2 times 20, 4 times 10, 5 times 8, and the signs are different. The two that combine to 3 are 5 and 8. The larger number, remember, always has a sign in the middle, so minus 8 plus 5. So we have a root of 8 and a root of negative 5. It wants the positive, so the positive solution or the positive number is 8. All right, so today we focused on standard form getting us at equal to zero and solving by factoring and looking at some word problems which we solved by factoring. Tomorrow I believe we take a look at the square root method and the quadratic formula. Have a good day. Bye-bye.